today. Just so excited, man. Um, man, I was taking my kids to school, man. The Holy Spirit hit me, man. Y'all know the rest, man. God is so awesome. But God was just showing me. I just just so humbled and grateful to even do these videos, um, and for those that support and you know encourage me and those that look at it. Um, but today I want to tell you the key to being happy. So the key to being happy is being happy for others. So I know you're like, how does that, how does that work? So I'll tell you Romans 12 and 15, it says rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn for verse 14. So the one before it, it says, bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse. So we are supposed to be happy for others. You know, um, even though, you know, there's things that we want um, and somebody may have them, you know, and let's say, uh, you know, we might want a new car or we, we, you know, we may want a car at all. And then somebody gets blessed with a car and they on Facebook showing pictures like, oh, God has blessed me with a car. We're supposed to be happy for them. And, you know, I know you saying, man, how is I supposed to be happy for him and I ain't get a car? Because, I mean, we don't know what they've been through. Um and again, we don't know, you know, we don't know how long it took for them to get that car. But we're supposed to be happy for them. Um, and also, too, I mean, because we want them to be happy for us. You know, it says Matthew 7 and 12 and everything then do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the essence of the law and of the prophet and the prophets. So, I mean, think about it. You know, we say, you know, we don't want nobody to hate. You know, you know, why are you hating, man? You know, why are you hating on me? That's why we're supposed to bless each other. That's why we're supposed to be happy. And then on top of that, you know, sometimes, you know, we are upset because somebody else is blessing. When we are happy for somebody else, God is going to bless us. Our blessing, that means our blessing is on the way. I say, think about it. You know, we have to show people how not to hate it's it's so it's, it's so easy for us we watch all these movies watch all these tv shows and everything like that and they teach us to hate you know why you know why did they get that you know god i'm god i'm over here being faithful to you i'm waiting on a husband or i'm waiting on a wife and so and so getting married no nah, i'd be happy for them that's what we're supposed to be and then sometimes you know god showed me sometimes people are actually upset with people about like a vehicle or a car, which is tangible, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's not even a blessing. You know what I'm saying? If your income, just giving you a simple example. If your income is $1,000 and your rent is like 200 and then they give you a car payment and it's 800, that's not a blessing. Now, if that car is given to you and there's no payments or the payments is well under the range, like God wouldn't put you into something that, you know, is not beneficial for you. Now, we can sit and want something. We can go and just sign and do this and, you know, get all these crazy types of loans, you know, for things that we don't need right now. The thing is to get yourself together, you know, um, and then sometimes, you know, we're upset. We're like, oh, man, like that's why you see people, you know, vehicles. Um, you know, they're they're stressed because they can't even afford a car that they're trying to live, you know, kind of like keeping up with the Joneses. But that's why we're happy. We should be happy for each other. But then we get back in the text, Job 2 and 11. It said, now, Job, three friends heard of all the adversity that came upon him. Now, Job was going through a whole lot and everything. So if you read the story of Job, um, you go to it. And they made an appointment together to come to sympathize with him and comfort him. So that's what we're supposed to do. That's why it says we rejoice with those who rejoice and we mourn with those who mourn. You know, we got to show fake people how to be real. And the only way to do that is by showing God's love. And there's times that God wants us to show God's love even to people that we don't like. Even if, you know, people that we don't like the way they act or anything. That's why God said, you know, bless those that persecute you, you know, saying and bless your enemies. And then you look at um, Hebrews 13 and 3. It says, remember those in prison as if you were bound with them. Even people that have went to prison, even people that come out, you know what I'm saying? We should still, you know, anytime I see somebody and they come out of jail or prison, I'm like, man, I'm glad to see you out, man. I'm like, man, you're going to stay out? You know, I try to encourage them, you know, because I don't want to see them going back. It says, those who are mistreated as if you were suffering with them. 
2 Thessalonians 3 and 16. This is one of my favorites. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times in every situation. The Lord be with you all. So God can give you peace in every situation, no matter what it is. Romans 13 and 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So God is saying that he wants us to love one another. You know, and that's all we owe the people is our love. You know, if you owe them money, that's a different story. You should pay your debts off. But God is saying after that, the only thing you owe somebody is love. And that's showing, you know, God's love towards them, being happy for them, you know. And then you look at Psalms 37 and 1. God said, do not worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. So people who get money the wrong way or you're like, oh, my God, like they got this house and look at what they're doing, you know. Verse two, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Verse seven, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because a man who carries out wicked schemes. So God is saying, even though you may see people that are getting blessed as we think they are because they are, you know, doing things um, illegal, wrongfully. You know, getting over on people. Don't worry about it. God said they're going to they gonna, they gonna wither away. <laughs> you always see that's why you can see a person, you know, saying when they have a lot of money and then all of a sudden, you know, what I'm saying they, you know, I watch American Greed sometimes. Then all of a sudden, you know, they end up, you know, um, you know, going to prison for a long time or paying back all these millions and things like that. And don't even worry about that. You know, what I'm saying what we're supposed to do is be happy for others. And when you can be happy for others, you are, um, you know, um, allowing God to see that you are ready to be a steward over the things that he has to bring into your life. So I'll leave you with this. Psalm 84 and 11. It says, for the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk as blamelessly or those who walk uprightly or those who do what is right. And God is saying, if you do what is right, God is going to bless you. That's why the key to being happy is being happy for others, even if you're waiting. Because a lot of times, you know, we look at it and we see, you know, what we think the time frame is. So we see a person and they're like, oh, you know, I got a car. They could have been waiting four years for that car and you only been waiting one year. And then your, and your car is supposed to be coming three months later. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we just got to be happy for those. You know, we got to mourn for those. And that's what we got to do. We got to show fake people how to be real. And we say it all the time. You know what I'm saying? There are some people that's real fake, you know? And I remember, you know, God, I'm like, God, do you want me to sit there and bless them? You know, and God was like, I want you to minister to your enemies, you know? And I'm like, listen, God, I want to be around nobody that's fake. You know, and God was like, listen, if you're going to do this thing for me, you know, you're going to have to be sold out. And so I'm like, okay, God. And that's how we show fake people how to be real is by showing God's love. Now, remember, God didn't call us to like people. He called us to love people. So you can love somebody from a distance. And like I said, when I see people, I'll be like, God bless you. Even people that have done some things, I could sit here and tell stories, but not going to go into that. But there's people that have done some wrongfully things to my friends, to my family, to me, myself, you know, but still, I pray for them. God bless them. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just pray for them. And you just say, you know what? And then when I see people, even when I go back home, there's people I see, you know what I'm saying? Hey, how's everything? You know what I'm saying? God bless you. That's it. There's really nothing to have a whole conversation. Sit down. Are my kids your kids? Nah. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says to try to live peacefully in everybody, but I have peace. That's why I can go in the room. And if that person goes in the room, my demeanor don't change. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand what God wants me to do. He didn't call me to like people. He called me to love people. You know what I'm saying? And so with that, you know, you're learning how to deal with people. And you say, because you just, you just, that's why God says separate yourself. But again, that doesn't mean you have to be with somebody a long period of time. You know, hey, let's go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? Nah, unless God tells you to do that, don't do that. And that's why you see sometimes our circles can change. You know what I'm saying? But the other thing is that, you know, when the people that we have in our circle, if they're not in your circle anymore, that doesn't mean they're a bad person. That just means that God is taking you to a higher level. But and those people are not spiritually ready to, to stay with you because they're they're you're, they're trying to attack you or anything like that. But I'll get into that another day. So, again, the key to happiness is being happy for others. God said in his word. Love you all. God bless.